What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back here again with another video. So I just finished watching Fast Lane, and I'm not gonna lie to you, I enjoyed myself for the most part. Um, we're gonna go through match by match. Um, there were some matches I didn't really care about, obviously. Each pay-per-view, there are some matches that I don't really care too much about, so I kind of skimmed through. And then there was other matches that I actually watched all the way through and thoroughly enjoyed. So we're going to go by them one by one, and we're going to talk about it, have a nice little discussion. But overall, I will say I definitely did enjoy this pay-per-view more than I expected to. So, so I have my notes right here. I took a decent amount of notes, so let's kind of go through them and... Uh, I'm going to get my thoughts and opinions on each match and each segment. So the first matchup was the women's tag team uh, championship match between Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler versus um, Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. I automatically knew this match was going to end in a funny fashion, obviously, because Sasha and Bianca are facing each other at WrestleMania for the SmackDown's Women's uh, Championship. So you kind of knew there was going to be some type of some type of mishap between them two because obviously they're facing each other at WrestleMania this year. Um, I don't know who Reginald is. <clears throat> I know I've seen him in a couple of clips on Raw. Uh, I believe on SmackDown. I believe. A couple of clips. I'm not sure. I, Raw or SmackDown, I'm not sure. But I don't know who Reginald is. I guess he's aligned with Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. But I, I kind of didn't understand that. Him interfering. So I was just like, I, I don't even know who the person is. So comment down below. Let me know who is he supposed to be to Nia Jax and uh, Shayna Baszler. Um, <clears throat> I will say I had made a mental note. I remember when uh, Shayna Baszler was a real threat in the women's division in my opinion i felt like she was like someone that people didn't want to mess with hell certain men didn't want to mess with Shayna baszler and i feel like since they've paired her up with nia Jax, cool she has some type of gold around her waist but i feel like she should be going for somebody's title and like breaking limbs because that's how she was in nxc so i do feel like they've dropped Dropped the ball on her character ever since she was feuding with, um, who was that she was feuding with uh, a few years ago at WrestleMania. I want to say it was, well, uh, who was it? Who was it? It's on the tip of my tongue. It's on the tip of my tongue. Becky Lynch. I don't know why I couldn't think of that. <laughs> I'm serious. I have no idea why I couldn't think of that. But she was feuding with Becky Lynch uh, at the time. And I, I still think Becky Lynch probably should have lost to give the strap to Shayna Baszler. And maybe she would be in a better position now. But obviously, they didn't go that route. So she's kind of just in this mid-card tier. But I do believe she's definitely a main event singles competitor. Um, Belair and Sasha start arguing, which caused them to lose the match. Obviously, you knew this was going to happen at some point. At some form of fashion, they were going to get into it, which was going to cost cost them, obviously, the tag team championships. And at the end of the match, of course, uh, Sasha, with her attitude, ends up slapping Bianca in the face. I honestly thought Bianca was going to start teeing off. I was hoping she would. Like, let's get this started. You know what I'm saying? Um, but we can clearly see... That I, I believe Sasha is probably going to be more of the heel in this situation. She plays better as a heel anyway. And Bianca is going to be more of a face going into WrestleMania. So I'm interested to see how their match play out. I'm really interested to see how their match plays out. I honestly think um, Bianca Belair deserves the strap for a little bit. So hopefully she can have her WrestleMania moment. But we'll see how things play out over the upcoming weeks. I'm sure their feud will intensify. So that match was it was a cool little opener. Nothing too crazy. Um, <clears throat> the promo package between Apollo Crews and Big E was very impressive. I know you guys have been telling me to check out Apollo Crews' heel run. I actually enjoy it. I actually like it. It gives some character to Apollo Crews. The only thing I knew Apollo Crews um, for, like, before his little heel turn was he's very athletic, he smiles a lot, and he doesn't win big matches. That's all I knew, I knew of Apollo Crews. You know, he was... He was uh, a, a promising star in NXT, but I do believe they took him out of NXT a little bit too quick. They probably should have kept him down there a little bit longer to develop some type of maybe a better personality 
on in ring wise, but I'm glad he does have this heel run, and I'm glad he's just going at the Intercontinental Championship gives it some type of importance. And I like the fact that Big E is aggressive with it in his single runs. Like, no, you're not about to just come out here try to end my career, take the title after I'm beating you multiple times. You know what? All right, this is what you want. Fine, cool. <clears throat> One thing I would say, I wish they would change up Big E's attire to match his, like, aggression in the ring. Because I know he has, like, the New Day thing going on. But he has this solo run. So, I, I think they need to start really separating himself in the sense of, like, I'm on this solo path right now. So, I would love for him to have a, a change of attire, at least in color-wise. So, it, it, it makes him more of a serious champion in my eyes when I see him come out there with different, like, like different type of fits other than the colorful a new day type outfits that's just my personal opinion but comment down below let me know if y'all agree with me on that i love how biggie was talking a lot of trash at the beginning of the match he was like no this is what you wanted apollo no you <clears throat> you asked for this like this is what you wanted so i'm gonna whoop your ass because this is what you wanted you wanted this match all right cool you tried to take me out all right cool bet I, I I love that man. I, I, I like Biggie's aggressiveness. Um, now the ending of this match was kind of weird for me personally. I didn't really like the whole like you couldn't really tell who got pinned, who didn't get pinned. It's it's kind of like a cheap way to lead up into a potential rematch. I don't like that. They could have ended it. They actually could have ended it off where Biggie maybe gets a roll up, he wins, and then Apollo Cruz attacks him from behind. Because now Apollo Crews can say, bro, I pinned you or, you know, it wasn't really a no definitive winner. I don't know. I don't know. I just thought that was kind of weird. But Apollo Crews ended up tacking him from behind, hitting him with uh, multiple, like, I guess you can say some Olympic slams, uh, multiple ones, um, basically just laying out Big E. And honestly, I mean... It, it, it's looking like they may have a rematch, so I'm not sure. Comment down below. Let me know if you guys would be interested in Apollo versus Big E once again. I don't know if I would be, but who knows? They probably had a stipulation to the match. Um, next thing up was uh, Seth versus Shinsuke. I like the fact that they were showing the promo, like a little, a little footage from SmackDown where basically Shinsuke started beating up on Seth Rollins. And when they cut back to the ring, Seth is like, why are you showing that package? Why are you showing that video? Y'all didn't have to show that. Why are you showing that? I like that. I thought that was nice little funny heel type commentary. Like, why are you showing the footage, bro? No one needs to see that. We're talking about right now. I'm about to whoop his ass now. You don't have to show him that. You don't have to show that. So I thought that was pretty funny. Um, Let's see. I will say this, same thing with Shayna. Shinsuke is, he was, oh man, he was on top of the world when he won the Royal Rumble coming out of NXT. You thought this was going to be the guy, and he never beat AJ, which I, I thought was a mistake. I think he should have beaten AJ, obviously. That match they had should have been one of the best matches of all time at WrestleMania. It was kind of lackluster. But either then, I think if they would have gave him the strap, it would have gave him some type of momentum that he could possibly hold on to. But ever since then, he's just kind of been in this mid-card purgatory. You know, I, I think he deserves a lot better, too. That's just my personal opinion. But, hey, man, I, I just remember a time Shinsuke was on top of the world. Um, I will say the match was okay. It wasn't anything too crazy. Seth ends up winning with the curb stomp, obviously. It, it, it was okay for what it was. You know what I'm saying? I think I'm, I would be more interested in seeing um, Seth versus um, um, Cesaro more because I think they would have probably a better match. Me, personally, I think they would. So, I, I can't wait for Cesaro to come back. They can continue their feud. I think I would be more interested in that match because I think that match would be nice. And I do think Cesaro needs that win over somebody like a Seth Rollins, someone that's established. So, I think him beating Seth at some point, maybe at WrestleMania, that would be a nice little rub for Cesaro because we all know Cesaro deserves some type of some type of uh, appreciation in the WWE because the dude is talented as hell. So, all right, the promo between Sheamus and Drew was really great. I didn't even know they were like real life friends like that. Like they showed the past twenty years and they just showed their upbringing and how close they were in the indie scenes and like. 
I didn't know that. And I thought that was a nice touch to this feud. You would think this feud would last a little bit longer because of that promo package. But no, bro. This is only like a, a one-time feud right now. Because, I mean, I knew, obviously, Drew was going to win because... You know, this is Drew versus Bobby is more of the marquee match. So I knew Drew was going to win. But I wish this was like a feud that was going on, you know, prior to Drew losing the title. You know what I'm saying? I, I think this would have been a nice feud to have, honestly, because that promo Patrick's was fantastic, man. And this match was hard hitting. I will say this right now. This no holds barred match was very intense, physical. There was welts. All over both competitors. I like this match. I'm. I, this is actually one of the few matches. I think this was like the first match I actually watched all the way through because it was in. It was intense. I like the story build up they had, and it was just brutal. Like I, I like it. Um, the rolling senton in the virtual crowd area it was a nice little spot. Um, I, I be forgetting how big that little the Thunderdome is. So seeing them up high in like the virtual crowd area i don't even realize how high it is until they zoom out i was like yo they're all the way up there um when drew threw sheamus through the led boards in the virtual crowd i thought that was a nice little spot i thought visually that looked like damn bro this man just threw him through some virtual people he just threw him like common trash i thought that was a pretty cool spot um the suplex to the floor by Drew on Sheamus. Uh, I want to say Sheamus is pushing, not Sheamus. Drew is pushing Sheamus on this like this little construction cart, this equipment cart, and he's pushing him on it all the way to the ringside area. He grabs him in the suplex position, and as Sheamus is laying on this crate, he flips him over and, and does a suplex to him all the way to the floor below. Bro, that impact was nasty. Not gonna lie to you, it, it was. It looked vicious on top of the fact that they got all these welts and bruises all over their body. Like, you could tell they were in a lot of pain in this match. Um, Sheamus hitting the white noise from the top of the barricade through, a, through the announce table. Nice little spot. Very nice spot. Looked looked pretty cool. The fact that he was able to balance himself on that barricade with somebody else was pretty impressive as well. But ultimately... Drew ends up getting the win uh, with a uh, nice Claymore kick. Um, I want to say Sheamus brought in like one of the side panels. Yeah, he brought in one of the side panels on the table, and he was going to, I believe, hit maybe like a, a, a white noise on the side panel uh, to Drew. But Drew was able to counter it, hit him with like a, a DDT, and then hit him with the Claymore kick. And that was it. One, two, three. And the match was over. As I expected, Drew was going to win because, obviously, he has to face Bobby Lashley at WrestleMania. I just wish this feud had a little bit more time to build, but nevertheless, it was entertaining. Now, this segment with Randy Orton and Alexa Bliss, I knew just, like, little snippets. Like, I would watch a little snippets of Alexa Bliss just messing with Randy. I didn't know this was an actual match until before the pay-per-view. Because I'm like, how does this happen? <laughs> we live in this this uh, like this like cancel culture world. How the hell does Randy Orton have a match with Alexa Bliss? Like, he's trying to actually physically hurt her. I know he's hit her with an RKO, but come on, bro. I'm, I'm just, like, believably wise. Maybe if this was WWE back in the day, sure, this actually would have happened. And Randy Orton probably would have hit a mean-ass RKO on her. But this is not that time period. So I knew something was up. She's on her Harley Quinn Joker. Well, no, her, her, she basically like a rep representation of Harley Quinn, but a, like a demonic Harley Quinn of sorts. You know what I'm saying? So it is it, this whole match was just I, I was laughing because I was like, bro, I don't know what the hell I'm watching right now. So Randy Orton's doing his traditional pose, right? All of a sudden he start coughing up fake blood and I'm just in there like what and he got mad he got mad about it so i'm like okay all right he's coughing up fake but this 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 is a great way to start the start the match so alexa bliss comes out there she got the little scary contact eyes in i'm like all right cool 
I'm still figuring out how this is how this match is even a thing. All right, whatever. So Randy's chasing her around the ring, bro. He's trying he's basically stalking this young woman. And they're on the opposite side of the ring, on uh on the outside of the ring, and Alexa Bliss like uses her magical powers to look up, then look down, and then as Randy's about to proceed, some fucking lights, like a light that's connected to a railing, just completely fall down in front of Randy. Damn near almost killing him in the process. And she was like, oops, dang it. I almost had him. I'm like, bro, what? What the hell? Oh, not to mention at the beginning of the match, as Randy's about to charge to attack, all of a sudden some fire just comes out of nowhere and surrounds Alexa Bliss, and the referee just hightails it. He just gets out the fucking way. He, le- I don't see the referee until the end of the match, bro. I literally thought the lef- referee said, fuck this, I quit my job. So I, di- I didn't know where the ref was. So, like, there's a lot of weird mystical stuff happening at this point. Um... Then she starts shooting fireballs out of her hand. And I'm like, man, if I was a kid back in the day and we had this type of segment back then, I would have been like, oh, my God, bro. Alexa Bliss is a witch. And I would have believed that. You know what I'm saying? I remember back in the day seeing The Undertaker rise up or seeing Kane, you know, conjure up this fire. You thought these motherfuckers were mystical beings. And this is kind of what it is, but we're in 2021, so it's kind of, you know, you can sift through the BS, but it's it's funny, it's kind of entertaining, but it's one of those things where if someone came in your crib, you, they see you watching this, they can be like, what the fuck, bro? Like, look, man, <laughs> don't judge me, dog. <laughs> so he shoots, she shoots fireballs out of her hand at Randy. Randy dodges them. Shout out to you, Randy. You're dodging dodging her fire attacks, man. That's awesome, bro. <laughs> so, at this point, there's a hand that comes from under the ring, right? And you can tell it's the fiend's hand, but it's like burnt and disfigured. And then all of a sudden, he comes up out of the ring, under the ring. There's smoke everywhere. There's fire rising. And Randy Orton's just sitting there shook like he's seen a ghost because he has. And you see the fiend in his new burnt, like, burnt victim costume. Like, he's basically burnt. He's charred from the face down. Everything's charred. His clothes, his face is disfigured. He got one, like, white glossed over eye. Like, everything's just disfigured on him and burnt to a crisp and then he, he hits him with the uh, Sister Abigail. And <laughs> the referee's at the corner of the of the ring. And uh, Alexa Bliss, uh, it was a weird pin. I'm not going to lie to you. She kind of straddles him. Like I, I, I was just like, whoa, what's, what's happening here? This is a family. This is a family wrestling channel. <laughs> I, I thought it's PG. What the hell's going on? She straddles him for the pin. Yes, says straddle him. For the pin, and the referees in the corner just one, two, three. All right, bro, I'm getting the fuck up out of here. You got motherfuckers popping up the from under the ring. They're burnt to a crisp, and they was just sitting there posing in their demonic glory. I don't, I don't know. Uh, it, it was weird, but it's cool to see the fiend. Obviously, it's gonna be the fiend versus Randy Orton at WrestleMania. Uh, I'm not sure if that's gonna be his costume, but. I don't know. So comment down below if y'all enjoyed that segment because I was just like, huh, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what I'm watching here, but it's kind of entertaining. It's funny to me, honestly. All right, man. So the match of the night. Obviously, this was gonna be the match of the night. If you thought any different, I don't know what you, I don't know what you thought was gonna happen here. This was going to be the match of the night. Daniel Bryan, I said Ryan. I don't know what's wrong with me. Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns with Edge as the special guest ring side enforcer for the WWE Universal Championship. Once again, promo package was great. I love the shots of showing Daniel Bryan winning at WrestleMania 30, which is obviously, for me personally, I'm not, I, I don't want to say obviously because I'm sure some of y'all don't know, that's one of my favorite WrestleManias of all time. Not even going to lie to you. WrestleMania 30 was 
a WrestleMania I will never, ever forget. Um, so they showed clips of that, and he's like, yo, I, I need to main event. That you, you don't understand how main eventing WrestleMania changes your life. And this may be one of my last times being able to go to WrestleMania. Very impactful promo, right? The Universal Championship has never looked this good, in my opinion. I'm sorry. Even when Brock held it, it didn't look this good. Even when Seth was trying to get it, it didn't look this good. Like, it has not looked as good as it has now. Only because Roman has the championship now. And his character change has made this championship, in my opinion, damn near the championship. We all know the WWE championship should be the tier, the top tier championship. But this is the case where Roman Reigns has made this this blue belt <laughs> seem more important than the WWE championship. And I love it. You got Daniel Bryan fighting for it. I don't think, no. Actually, Daniel Bryan has never won the Universal Championship. And the same way with Edge. Edge has never won the Universal Championship. So you have two future Hall of Famers going for the Universal Championship. They've never held it. And Roman Reigns is carrying that that championship as if it is the best thing known to man. And I love it. So Universal Championship actually looking like something that's very important. And I've been loving that. All right. Daniel Bryan... Showing off his submission skills. At the beginning of this match, Daniel Bryan's really on this. He's kind of like trolling Roman. Like, I'm going to get your legs. Oh, I almost got you there. Like, he's literally just messing with him. He's smiling. He's just like, bro, I do this. I am a wrestler. I know how to manipulate joints. I know how to snap your stuff up, bro. Don't play with me. I love that. I love like Daniel Bryan is literally playing mind games with Roman. Then, of course, Roman would finally get his hands on Daniel Bryan. And when I say he's landing some vicious kicks, vicious blows, vicious like like punches, vicious like elbows, like he everything that Roman hits is with some type of force behind it, with some type of evil intent, like I'm trying to put this man in a hospital because he's pissing me off. I love that. It's, it's his moveset is, is just dramatically gotten better. Roman ends up using a Boston Crab. I believe they was at the top rope, and I think Daniel Bryan was trying to potentially um, flip him off the top rope, but he didn't have enough leverage. Ultimately, uh, Roman Reigns had his own submission move. Had him in a Boston Crab. You know, they're selling it. You know, the announcer's selling it like maybe Daniel Bryan will tap. But we know Daniel Bryan's not the, about to tap to that. And I love the fact that they're still building Daniel Bryan as this ultimate underdog. Even though we know from a technical standpoint, Daniel Bryan is the better wrestler than Roman Reigns. But he's still the underdog in this situation because Roman Reigns is such a powerful being you know what i'm saying all it takes is a couple grounding pounds which we did see in this match when roman gets pissed off he start grounding and pounding it looks brutal and i honestly think that's how he ended up getting busted open just a little bit daniel bryan ended up getting busted open around the lip area so it could have been one of them blows i wouldn't have been surprised if it was roman this is knees in the corner i mean he's hitting like some ufc brock lesnar knees to the abdomen looked very vicious bro and I love the fact that when Daniel Bryan was applying a yes lock, you can see the pain in Roman's face. He's writhing, yelling in pain because he's trying to get out of it. And he was putting them in that lock multiple times in this match, bro. I love just the story building. Like, this wasn't a high, fast impact match. It built up. It, was a, it had a slow build up. But it's the fact that every time he got into that submission hold, you wasn't sure if he was going to tap. And Roman was selling it, but at the same time, it still looked brutal. Um, now, here's the funny part. I started dying laughing. So, I want to say Roman is uh, basically getting up or whatnot. And Daniel Bryan's in the far corner. He runs at Roman. Roman ducks out the way like moves out the way because the, the ref is right behind roman and roman moves out the way ref get blasted 
with the running knee. And the way the ref sold it was so funny to me. He just, oh, and he rolls out the, the ring and just flops on the ground. Never to be seen again. That referee died. It was crazy. R.I.P. ref, man. He sold that running knee. So we knew, obviously, Edge was going to get involved, right? So Edge is getting involved. Um, Roman Reigns hit the nice little spear. Looks beautiful. He goes for the for the pinfall. One, two, doesn't get the three as Edge is counting. And, you know, Roman is feeling some type of way. He's like, yo, bro, like, you know what I'm saying? You know, he, he felt like he, you know, that should have been a three count. He's like, bro, man, like, what you doing in my ring? Basically, like, bro, I'm, I'm the enforcer. Like, you do your job, I'm going to do mine. And, like, well, you know, basically, Roman's just talking his trash. Like, I, hey, man. I'm going to handle up on him, and then I'm going to handle up on you. I'm loving it, bro. Just loving Roman just at, in this character of his is just great. I'm not going to lie to you. So, at this point, of course, Jay motherfucking Uso. Oh, my God, dog. Jay Uso. It, it, it's become a meme at this point in my eyes of how many times this nigga Jay going to come out there just to get his ass whooped and interfere in the match. It, it it annoyed me only because I know what's about to happen here. You know what I'm saying? I know this is, of course, this match was going to end in screwy fashion, but it was just the fact that Jay came out there. He ended up super kicking um, Edge. Then he ends up uh, super kicking Daniel Bryan, gets a steel chair or whatnot. And I think he throws Edge into the uh, the steel post. And he's about to hit Daniel Bryan with the chair. Daniel Bryan ducks it. Uh, ends up, I want to say, ends up kicking him. Or ends up hitting him with the hitting him with the running knee. I'm not sure. I, I, th I think he does. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Then he ends up picking up the chair. Start beating the holy hell out of J.U. So, I mean, beating his ass. So, now, he's like, all right, cool. I have this chair. The referee's down. Roman's down, so he goes to hit Roman Reigns, and of course he misses, ends up hitting hitting Edge. Then uh, I want to say, uh, does Daniel Bryan get hit with a Superman punch? I'm not sure. I, I think he does. Not quite sure because at this point I stopped taking notes because it was getting entertaining as hell. I was I was like, oh man, what's about to happen? I was I stopped taking notes at this point. I want to say uh, the I only took like a few notable notes after this. At this point, so uh, I want to say Roman's setting up for the spear, setting up for the spear, like, yo, talking this trash in the corner, and it gets countered into, once again, the yes lock, and when I say this was one of the most intense yes locks I've seen in a very long time, I wish there was a live crowd for this, Paul Heyman's over there pleading with Roman, telling him to think about his family, Roman is fading, and I'm what I think this is the first time ever in Roman's career. Y'all, y'all can correct me if I'm wrong. Roman taps. He's tapping. He's lightly tapping, but he's tapping. Daniel Ryan made Roman Reigns tap, and I I like the zoom in. The camera work was perfect because Edge is selling being hit by the chair, but you can't see Edge no more. All you see is the, they locked in on Roman's face and. Daniel Bryan just has this submission hold in, and Roman's he's he's trying to fight out of it, but there's literally nothing he can do, bro. He ends up his eyes end up starting to glaze over, and then he starts tapping lightly, and essentially Daniel Bryan won. Daniel Bryan is one of the first people I think ever in Roman Reigns' career to make Roman Reigns tap out, and I I thought that was dope. I marked out a little bit, but I knew it wasn't going to end correctly. It wasn't going to end as Daniel Bryan winning. Ultimately, Edge comes out of nowhere, hits Daniel Bryan with a steel chair, then hits Roman Reigns with a steel chair, then hits Daniel Bryan with it again. Edge had snapped. I hadn't seen that type of that version of Edge in a minute. The rated R superstar came out and he just snapped. He walked to the back. Another referee comes out there. Roman Reigns crawls his way to Daniel Bryan for the pin. One, two, three. And Roman Reigns retains his championship at Fastlane, which I figured was going to happen. But nonetheless, 
This was entertaining as hell. This match was entertaining. It was the story of Daniel Bryan living up to what he saying, said on SmackDown. I'm going to tap you out. And ultimately, he did tap him out, but there was no ref to call it, so he didn't win the match. But this match was enjoyable, and I think what they did right, for me personally, they made Daniel Bryan easily one of Roman Reigns' toughest opponents since his heel turn. Roman Reigns literally had to crawl himself over to Daniel Bryan to get the pin. Roman Reigns actually tapped. No one has ever even come close to making Roman Reigns tap in his career, let alone this happening. This built up Daniel Bryan as this. He's still the underdog, but someone that's like, yo, Daniel Bryan can actually beat Roman Reigns, and it's believable. If there's anybody that's believable to beat Roman Reigns, it's Daniel Bryan at this point. They made Daniel Bryan look amazing, even in the feet. And I figured something screwy was going to happen to potentially get Daniel Bryan in the main event scene because Daniel Bryan has a case now. He can say, yo, I made Roman Reigns tap out. Here's the footage. I made him tap out and then Edge hits me with a steel chair. I deserve to be in that match. I deserve to be in the main event of WrestleMania. And I, I, I'm all for it. Cause you can't end this 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 nice little feud between Daniel Daniel and Roman. You can't just end it like this. There needs to be some type of conclusion, and I think the best way to conclude this is at WrestleMania, because Daniel Bryan has a legitimate point from a storyline standpoint. I beat Roman Reigns. No one has beaten him since he's had the title. You know what I'm saying? Since he came back, no one has beaten him. I have beaten him. I tapped him out. I made him tap out. I deserve to be in that match. If it wasn't for Edge, I would be the champion right now. So I am interested to see how this plays out. Honestly, I think it's going to be a triple threat match for the Universal Championship. And I would love to see the dynamic between Daniel Bryan and Edge because I think it's going to get intense. This match is going to be great. If they do set it, and I do think they will, it would. it's WrestleMania. you got to have the best matches on WrestleMania. And there's no bigger match, in my opinion, on that card than Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns versus Edge for the Universal Championship. Comment down below. Let me know if you agree with me. But overall, this pay-per-view, like I said at the beginning of the uh, of my thoughts and opinions uh, at the beginning of the video, I think it was it was okay. Uh, of course, the the last match definitely made it even more enjoyable for me. But ultimately, I think this movie. I said movie. I'm tripping. I think this uh, pay per view was uh, was quite enjoyable. Um, I think the only matches I would probably watch again is uh, the Drew and the uh, uh, versus Sheamus, Drew versus Sheamus match, and I, I would probably end up watching um, obviously the main event Roman versus uh, Daniel Bryan. I know there was some match with uh, Braun Strowman, and uh, I guess. Um, Shane McMahon was supposed to be involved having a match with Braun Strowman. I don't care about Shane versus Braun. Who cares? M not me. I don't. So I didn't even take notes on that because I that whole that match that segment don't give a damn. But other than that, other than the matches, I didn't really too much care for. I enjoyed the pay per view. It was it was okay. It was a, it's an okay. It was a serviceable pay per view. Definitely in the main event and the Drew versus Sheamus match definitely sold it for me but comment down below let me know what was your favorite match of the night let me know i would love to get your guys opinion and if you guys agree with me that you think that the main event will be drew versus i said drew uh, roman versus edge versus daniel bryan comment down below let me know if you all agree with me on that but i appreciate all the love and support road to 40k and i appreciate y'all kicking it with me and i'll see y'all on the next one peace